Next to the stage, please welcome Jenny Beth Martin, president and co-founder of Tea Party Patriots. We want a country where personal freedom is cherished, where all Americans are treated equally, so that everyone can pursue the American dream. Nearly every American you talk to will tell you they want that too. A lot of Americans think they already have it. But when you've been targeted by the IRS, or your government is making you buy insurance you neither want nor need, when our nation is over $17 trillion in debt, which means every American owes over $50,000, or when some laws are enforced and others are ignored completely, you realize Washington may not cherish freedom at all. That's why America needs us. And that's why we form Tea Party Patriots. We will win. Our values, personal freedom, economic freedom, and a debt-free future will win. We don't want to see our country stretch too thin because we know it is not fair to leave our children and grandchildren with the bills we've incurred for our nation's debt. We must repeal the entire health care law. And, and put choice back in the hands of people. We must grow our economy, and the fastest way to do that is with reduced taxes, replacing the entire tax code with a fixed, flat, fair rate. When it comes to immigration reform, we know there is already a legal path to citizenship for those willing to immigrate here. Anyone who decides to get off that path and enter the United States illegally should not be granted amnesty, for it is neither fair nor equal treatment under the law. Michelle Bachman knew that America needed the people of the Tea Party, and she trusted the people. In 2009, she helped turn our passion in the Tea Party movement into productive action. Like us, Michelle dreams of an America that lives up to her potential. Our dreams are so lofty because we do cherish personal freedom. And we know our job is not done until everyone including those we elect to represent us, cherish personal freedom too. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Tea Party Patriots champion and my friend, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman. <laughs> CPAC this year. Jenny Beth Martin, you are a dear friend. You're a true patriot, a great conservative woman. And I just want to say this morning, we will have a woman for president, just the right one. You know, don't forget, we are the party, the only party that had a woman on the presidential ticket this century. And in the last race in 2012, we are the only party that fielded a woman for President of the United States, and her goal was to dismantle Obamacare and ensure that Iran never had a nuclear we weapon. 
The other party talks a lot about nominating a woman in 2016, and that's fine. But she's going to have a lot of tough questions that she's going to have to answer. She's going to have to answer one in particular question. Like when she gave that reset button to Russia, did she not think they weren't going to use it? Because they're busy resetting the boundaries in Ukraine even as we speak. And when the phone call came in the 3 o'clock hour, when she found out that Americans in the hellhole of Benghazi were under attack, she's going to have to ask, answer a very tough question. Did she pick up the phone and call the Secretary of Defense and the President of the United States and demand that they send a military rescue operation into Benghazi to rescue Americans that were under fire? And she's going to have to answer another tough question. She's going to have to explain why she blamed a Hollywood filmmaker who was doing nothing more than exercising his First Amendment rights rather than the Al-Qaeda-inspired terrorists who actually conducted the attack. She's got a lot to explain. But let's take a quick trip down memory lane, shall we? In 2008, Barack Obama promised all of us, and we heard him say, that in five days he was going to fundamentally transform the United States of America. Well, check that box. What he actually transformed was our constitutional system of checks and balances. We all know that the President of the United States has a very high opinion of himself, but we didn't know that when he read the Constitution that he thought Article I, the legislature, Article II, the executive, and Article III, the court system, was all about himself and gave power all to himself. That's fundamentally transforming, that's lawlessness, and that is going to end. The President also has transformed our health care system into a plus-size bureaucracy. It's made up of plutocrats that are putting themselves directly smack in the middle between patients and doctors. And we are only at the threshold of Obamacare devastation. Next up on the President's list is transforming our immigration system. And that is the last thing that conservatives should do is to help the president pass his number one goal of his second term, and that's amnesty. Because America has long been a beacon of freedom in a tumultuous world. We don't, for a moment, apologize for our policies on legal immigration. We allow over one million people into this country every year, and we should give ourselves a round of applause for that. We warmly welcome those across the globe who seek to come to our country legally. But to come here, any new American must do what all of us are required to do, respect the rule of law. Now, Mr. President, I hope you're listening because that goes especially for you. Now, who is it that's clamoring for amnesty? Is it the American worker? That's usually near the bottom of his priority list when you do polling. The answer is it's Wall Street, it's big business, and it's connected lobbyists here in this city who want it done. Today there are 20 million Americans who want a full-time job, but they can't find one. We have the lowest labor participation rate since women joined the workforce in the 1970s. So you see, with so many Americans struggling in this Obama economy, I think it's incumbent upon us that our first duty has to be to help our fellow American workers, not lower their wages by rapidly adding millions of unskilled laborers. So the question becomes, will we become a country of growth and opportunity, or will we become a country of dependency and the welfare state? The consultant class may say that amnesty is a great idea, but we have to stand with the middle class, not the consultant class. And when you consider 
the president's absolute and utter disregard for the Constitution, well, there's simply no reason to trust him to enforce the law on the books. It's time that we learn the lessons of 1986. Number one, secure the, bo the borders first, and then second, build the dang fence. With America's greatness in decline under President Obama, I know it is tempting to look ahead to a new president in 2016. Believe me, I know that from experience. But we have to keep our eyes on the prize. And I know you agree with me. Taking the gavel out of Harry Reid's hand on the first Tuesday in November is going to feel pretty darn sweet. In fact, we all need to tell Harry Reid that his reign is over. We all remember how great we felt in 2010 when we rose up and we pulled the gavel out of Nancy Pelosi's hand. That was a sweet day. And with your hand, we will create that exact same magic and then some this year in 2014. You see, our movement at its core is an intellectual movement. We are based on the greatest ideas that have ever been conceived in the mind of man. And I would put those magnificent ideas up against any other idea for freedom in the world. Because the Constitution, limited government, free enterprise, strong families, these are the principles that have passed the test of time. Nothing in our Constitution says government is supposed to be a charity. Government is not the family. It is not the church, and certainly it should never be our doctor's office. And you know as well as I do that America hasn't survived for more than 200 years because of Washington bureaucracy. It has survived because it's been preserved by the men and women who've risen to the challenge and who've made our country great. And we will survive Barack Obama too. I want to leave you with you some very powerful words that were given by a man who gave a wonderful order. He gave that order to a man who had a very difficult ride at the beginning of our nation's history. It was called Paul Revere. We were under severe and imminent attack. And these were the words that he gave. He said, on you depend the fortunes of America. You are to decide the important question on which rests the happiness and liberty of millions yet unborn. Act worthy of yourselves. The path that the President has put us on is truly transforming this nation before our eyes into a nation that none of us no longer recognize. But don't despair, because the, as the President's past is smothering the American dream here at home and projecting weakness abroad, no that answering great challenges is what we Americans do for a living. We have overcome these challenges and we will do it again. It begins today, it begins with you, and I say to you all this morning, join us, pledge today, act worthy of ourselves. Thank you all at CPAC and God bless the United States of America.